Well, hello, everybody. So great to be here. And so we have standing room only. How great is that? <laughs> um, so I'm excited to talk to you today about the truth because I have had have this complicated relationship with what is true and the truth right now. And I thought I would share my confusion with all of you. So you might be wondering if I'm gonna tie this all up at the end and probably not, because I haven't figured it out for myself. That's my disclaimer. Um, so I had a very unique experience recently. I had the opportunity to have some conversations with two families. So these families were estranged and for many years they were estranged. And then I was able to talk to them about some past events. And what I could see was that um, as they didn't have connection with each other to discuss things, things took on a whole different truth. And it could have been a simple conversation that happened decades ago that somebody perceived in one way on one in one family, and then somebody else perceived in a different way in another family. And then that added to kind of the narrative of the family. And then they ended up on these trajectories. And what was fascinating to me is 25 years later, that it's like they lived completely different experiences. Because one truth, truth was added on to another truth to another truth and when you have two different groups that sort of are moving off and and really just discussing that amongst themselves it becomes this di divergent path and i was fascinated by this experience and then i thought well holy dinah where else in the world does this happen and has this happened you know, we have wars going on, and how much of that is because the two families were estranged and the conversations, you know, took on a life of their own on these divergent paths. And what was so interesting in this situation is nobody was trying to deceive anybody else. And in fact, it wasn't meant to harm anybody. It was just the compilation and accumulation of truth. And still, it was so vastly different. So which was true? Like, was somebody true and somebody not true? Or is there more to this idea of truth? So I personally am a longing for truth right now. I want to turn on the television and have somebody say, this is how it is. And I can say, oh, whew. I'm grateful that someone's figured it out. I can rest easy. And that doesn't seem to really be what's happening in the world. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I can easily go into this. Remember back in the day when we turned on Walter Cronkite and he just said it like it was, and um, or you know, the Canadian, the P Peter Mansbridge or the Lloyd Robertson. And then that was true, and you could just believe it, and then you could go about your day. There was no social media. There was, um, you know, no internet to even fact check it. So it was true, right? And now, of course, looking back, we realize, actually, that was one perspective, right? That was a very North American-centric, white, privileged point of view. True. So that's annoying because now there is no, like even that thing, I'm like, couldn't we go back to that is not there. And now news is left leaning or right leaning. And most of, if you turn on the news channels, most of the shows are actually some person's opinion on what is happening. And actually, I mean, maybe it's their truth, but there's not a lot of just factual, objective truth. So is there factual, objective truth in the world? I don't know. Did I mention I'm, I don't have any answers? <laughs> I have a lot of questions. So <laughs> misery loves company. So I'm inviting you all into my confusion. So, but you know, this concept of truth, I think there 
it, it feels to me, which I recognize could be completely untrue, my truth feels like there's an erosion of truth happening. And, you know, I, I watched a documentary the other day, and it's a documentary on health. And it was, it was a bizarre experience watching it because it was essentially, I mean, they didn't say this. They said they were doing an experiment and measuring people who had this sort of Mediterranean, I think, diet and veganism. And, but, I mean, the, the subtext was definitely it's better to be vegan. Um, and then there were all these very odd little interjections. Like they did this whole thing where somebody was preparing chicken in their kitchen and then they measured it for all the bacteria that was around. And I was like, what does that have to do with which diet is healthier? But so it was kind of a conflation of all these things. And I mean, they were kind of all true, but they're being pieced together in a very, what I perceived as a propaganda kind of way. And again, though, I, I just think, could somebody just tell me the truth? Because I, I, I really, I long for that as far as health goes. I want to know, does it make sense for me to eat more like this or more like this? But I find when I watch it, it's just so polarized. You know, with climate change, we get into, well, some people are like way over on it doesn't even exist. And then you've got other people who are over on this is the answer for everybody, you know, whether it's electric vehicles. And... What about, is that the truth that's palatable? Because I think, I mean, I drive a hybrid, for sure, fossil fuels, electric vehicles. There's something in all of that. But we haven't actually had a conversation about consumerism and society. And those, well, maybe we actually need to look at our values. And maybe it's our relationship to the earth. Maybe it's a loss of indigenous wisdom. Like The whole binary simplify everything is not necessarily lying but is it truth so i'm a big fan of the comedian stephen colbert do you watch his show so in 2005 he had the colbert report and he coined a term called truthiness and he was actually it was often he was talking about things related to george w bush at the time and truthiness meant that something was professed as true just because we feel like it's true, not because it is true. And then in 2016, he coined the term Trumpiness. <laughs> and that was the term of, we don't even need to feel like it's true. We can just profess it as truth. And if we look at the timeline, I think we might be due for a new term. We now have AI that can create a completely fake video showing a person saying a thing they never said that is completely untrue. And we have politicians talking about space lasers. Like, I don't even know that we need a plausibility anymore. So I don't know what that next term is going to be, but it's part of that erosion of truth. And then I know for myself, I have questioned my own truth, my own sense of truth. Because, we, you know, we all make up, I think we all have this little rule book of this is what's true for me. And if you're anything like me, I judge other people based on it. So I had a situation years ago. I work with students in post-secondary education. And I had a student lie to me. And I was crushed. I love my work, I put my heart and soul into it, and I feel I do right by these students. And then a student lied to me, and I was very upset about it. And then, so the students I worked with at the time are students with disabilities. And I had this rule book, this truth that said, one should never lie. It is bad to lie. And then I thought about, well, you know what? For some people in the world, lying is necessary. It's a very privileged perspective to say, you know, I have a sort of general acceptance that I'm treated fairly, that things go my way. You know, if I got pulled over by the police, I would tell them the truth. Like, I don't, I don't have a, a feeling of, of oppression in that way. And yet other people do. 
Some people live in a world that where the, the cards are really stacked against them. You know what? Sometimes lying makes sense. And it, sometimes it's the safest thing to do. So see, even that truth that seemed like a pretty basic, like, it's a good person, you don't lie, actually wasn't so true. But then I loved, actually, your reading earlier. I thought that that idea of that internal truth, because there's got to be truth somewhere or something like it, right? Um, I'm not willing to give up hope completely. Uh, at one of the podcasts I love to listen to is We Can Do Hard Things. And uh, Glennon Doyle said, she was telling a story about something, and she says, well, I don't know if that actually really happened and if it's factual, but it's true. And I thought, oh, I like that. I like that, because I, I mean, that's, that's story, right? Narrative. Like, sometimes we, myth is told in this story that that stuff didn't really happen, but it's still true, right? It, it has a truth to it. If we look at religion and spirituality, I mean, some people absolutely believe that Muhammad was the last prophet. Uh, some people believe that Moses parted the Red Sea and led the Israelites out of Egypt, that Jesus turned water into wine. And they, those things may not be factual, but are they true? Maybe. And maybe it's, it aligns with something within us that is true. And I think that is what unity and all the new thought teachings have tried to do is they've tried to look into all the ancient traditions and say, okay, what's true here? We're not so sure about the parting of the Red Sea and stuff, but there's gotta be a truth in here somewhere. Like what is that fabric of truth? And pulling all of those threads and weaving it together into kind of a new movement. So that is sort of what we've, we've built ourselves on. And if I'm honest, I think we've built some truths that maybe aren't true as well, right? Because that's the slippery slope of truth. And I've been reading some books on consciousness right now. So if you think I was going to find hope there, I did not. <laughs> and these books have really unpacked our, you know, when we think we may, it looks at all these like neuroscience and when we think we've made a decision, actually our brain decided it before our conscious mind said, yes, I decide to do that. I think, good grief. If I can't even trust up what's going on up here, then what is true? Um, this idea that, you know, there is consciousness and yet maybe it's not that consciousness that drives us, but oh, it's our consciousness that's aware of what's happening. I'm like, huh. Well, that sort of unpacks a whole lot of what I was holding as true. So where does that all leave us? Actually, I'm really asking. <laughs> where does that leave us? If there is no truth out there, if we can't turn on the proverbial Walter Cronkite, if even sometimes our own internal beliefs and processes are not true, if even our intuition and our, our sort of subconscious mind can lead us astray. What is true? So what do we do with this? And because I don't know, can we answer that question? I'm not sure. But what I'm trying to do as I move into this awareness, and I've dragged you all with me, um, is I'm trying to hold it a little bit more light. I'm trying to you know, whereas I would have asked, what is true? Now I'm trying to ask, you know, what is true for me? And then even further, what is true for me right now? Because this has been the biggest um, angst I have about ministry is I say something as truth. And then next year I'm like, I don't believe that anymore because I'm learning and growing. So I, even that, the holding it as a steadfastly people should never lie um well you know what sometimes that does actually serve them well so science actually is one of those places where it i mean destroys our thought on truth you know that idea that a, a that an, something can be a particle and a wave depending on whether somebody's looking at it which is true um but 
science has this aspect of they tend to hold things as true and not true, and yet there, there's an ease of moving to something new. So maybe, you know, often when something is sort of put forward as this is what our findings were, this is true, is there's a, an asterisk to that in the scientific world of, as for the study we did today, but we could do another study tomorrow and it will show completely different results or it will falsify this. And then we just move to that place. So maybe even that is something we can bring in. Who knew I was gonna learn from science? Some of you didn't even finish biology 11. Um, but just that idea of that we hold it lightly, not as this thing that I need to fight to the death over. And then I can question within me those firm beliefs. And when I feel myself pushed up against somebody's threatening my truth, and I can start to question that. Uh, there's an interesting thing happening. Do you all know the, the work by Byron Katie? Have you heard of that? So she wrote a book ages ago. I don't even know when it was. And um, it was a big thing at the time when I read it. And um, it's having this resurgence. Everywhere I, I look, I see people referring to Byron Katie's The Work in mainstream society. And she, she has a method for kind of challenging those, those truths that we hold that maybe aren't serving us. And she has the four questions with the turnaround. The first question is, and it's when we have a thought that maybe is not serving us or a belief. Is it true? Question number two, can I absolutely know that that's true? If we think about my lying thing, people should not lie. Is that true? Sure, I believed it at the time. Could I absolutely know that it's true? Well, it turns out it serves some people to lie. How do I react? And what happens when I believe that thought? Well, I get pretty judgy of people. I get pretty offended when they lie to me. And I get very like, you're a good person or a bad person because of whether you told the truth. Who would I be without that thought? Who would I be if I wasn't so fixated on people must never lie? I'd be a per much more open-minded person. I'd be much more accepting of different views. So the idea, and then the last piece that Byron Katie talked about is turning it around. So my belief that people should never lie or lying is bad is that lying is sometimes a necessary thing for people or lying has its place in some situations to turn that around. So what can we do with it all? And where do we find truth? I loved the like asking, you know, taking a step on what do I believe? Asking ourselves, what is true for me right now? And then I think there's a place, because this is all very on the cognitive level, but then I think there's a place of truth within. I think art, if anybody has had the opportunity to see Judith's art, that is true. It is there, it's color, it's puring form. There is a truth in that art. Um, our meditation, that experience where we have that almost transcendent moment where we lose kind of the attachment to our form, I think that's pretty true. Love, I think that feeling of love is true. And then I think sometimes also we need to just bring it down into these very laser-focused, small truth. You know that warm smile that you exchange with a stranger? That's pretty true. In that moment, it's true. It doesn't have any story around it. But I think in those moments, we can tap into that truth. And maybe that's all we need to look at in that moment. So I'm not suggesting we erase accountability for people. I'm just a, a suggesting that maybe we need to kind of rethink truth. Maybe we need to tap into the truth within. Maybe we need to expand our ideas of truth without it being this box that people are judged by. So those are my thoughts on truth. Those, that's my confusion that I've shared with you all.